Welcome to the Audacity to Podcast, episode 65, Audacity Compressor Showdown. Hello and welcome back. I'm Daniel J. Lewis, the host of this podcast where we talk about podcasting with passion, organization, and dialogue. I like to give you the guts and teach you the tools to do just that. This is a how-to podcast about podcasting and using Audacity in every five episodes. I like to focus exclusively on Audacity, not just a little tip, not a little mention of Audacity, but something For those who want to know something in depth about Audacity. And that's what I'll be covering today. In past episodes, I've talked a lot about audio compressors. I've mentioned hardware compressors like the Behringer MDX 4600, which is what I use. And I've mentioned software compressors like Chris's Dynamic Compressor, which I now host on the AudacityToPodcast.com website. But I got an email in from Alex and he asked, Hi, I was wondering if there's any real difference between the compressor already included in Audacity 1.3 and Chris's dynamic compressor. To add to this, does Chris's dynamic compressor do normalizing so I don't need to apply that effect separately? To put this in context, I have old recordings varying from 1970s to 1990s of a stand-up comedian I like. These recordings are in MP3 form. The quality varies a lot, both of the sound and of MP3. So I'm attempting to try and remaster these recordings. My workflow was, number one, remove audacity. Number two, normal, not remove audacity, remove noise in audacity. Number two, normalize. Number three, apply audacity compressor effect if needed. However, after stumbling on your podcast of Chris's Dynamic Compressor, by the way, I talk a lot about that over in the audacitypodcast.com slash eight was the episode where I really talked about Chris's Dynamic Compressor a lot. And no, that's not correct. It's not eight. It is actually five, I believe. The audacitypodcast.com slash five. We'll say that's it. We'll pretend that's it. If that's not it, go to the show notes for this episode at theaudacitypodcast.com slash 65. And I did just confirm it is episode five. So he continues. He says, I now contemplate that all those three steps, removing noise, normalizing, and applying compressor, can actually be performed in one noise can be removed using the floor feature. Normalization is part of it if the answer is yes. What do you think? Or should there be something else that I could be doing to improve the recording? Note that compression is especially important for me as I listen to the audio often in the car, so low volume sounds are inaudible with road noises. Thanks, Alex. Thank you very much for that email, Alex. I really appreciate that. And anyone else who has questions, feel free to send that, especially feedback for the podcast, to feedback at the audacity to podcast.com or you can call in to 903-231-2221 and leave a message there or you can also get the show notes for this episode over at the audacity to podcast.com slash 65 and converse about this topic specifically now answering the question is not quite as straightforward as it might seem. Initially, I've been saying, well, Chris's dynamic compressor is better. But is it? You know, I like to reevaluate things and reapproach things and make sure that it is truly still the best way of doing things. And so I decided to look at several different compressors for Audacity and honed it down to just a few that we'll be looking at. And we're going to have a showdown between these different compressors and try to determine which one does the best job and which one might be the best for you. So what I did, and by the way, you guys who responded to this are totally awesome. I'm sure many other people got this email, but I sent an email just the morning of my recording this. I sent it at 8.30 a.m. asking people, send me some audio samples from your recording 
that I can use in my podcast to run these tests. Because it's very easy for me to try and demonstrate to you with my equipment what works on my voice with my microphone and all of the things that I have along in my process. I can show that, but then if you apply those same settings in your case, it might not work. So I got feedback and samples back from several people, and you'll be hearing their audio clips in this as I test this and demonstrate the different sounds of these processing effects. We'll be using the built-in compressor, Chris's dynamic compressor, C3 multiband compressor, which isn't one I talk about much because it's just very complicated to use, but it is free. It's available out there. And I will also throw in Levelator, simply because Levelator gets so much attention for podcasting, and it's so much of a one-stop shop to do your stuff. If there was time, I would also compare this to Audition's multiband compressor and some of its compressor settings to see, are you really missing that much by not using Audition or here's what you might be missing from using Audition. I'll save that for a future episode of actually comparing Audition's effects to Audacity because I know a lot of you out there are probably wondering about switching to Audition and I'll shed some light on that later on. But for this episode, we'll start with this is the raw recording that each of these people sent. Now to make it fair, some of these recordings were sent in as stereo. I mixed them down to mono and in a couple cases there were actually things where they had it split so uh, their voice was on the left side and their co-host voice was on the right side and if I just do Audacity's tracks menu and then choose stereo track to mono sometimes that actually lowers the volume of both tracks if the left and right aren't containing the same kind of audio. So in that case, what I did is I split the tracks to two mono tracks, then merged them together. Essentially, all tracks you're going to hear are merged down to a single mono track. And with one or two exceptions, they're all 44.1 hertz. And almost all of them were recorded in uncompressed format. If they were compressed, it was a very high uh, quality setting. So hopefully you won't be hearing much compression artifacts. Now, as I record this into my podcast, I'm doing this live, direct to drive, and in fact, live in front of an audience over at noodle.mx slash live. I do this live every Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern time, and also in front of the gain over at techpodcast.com. I'm a member over there, the Tech Podcast Network, and they've got some great shows. But they'll be hearing these things being recorded live and in fact, seeing these things recorded live. And you, the downloader, don't worry about whether I'm reprocessing these samples. I'm not. What will happen is because of the way I record these things, the audio samples I'm playing are going into a separate track. The only thing I will do to that track when I publish this episode is renormalize it. And normalizing just increases the volume of everything so that the maximum peak is no louder than a certain thing. Normally, I set that to minus one, but because some of the recordings I got in are above minus one, and I don't really have a, a definite standard of, uh, across all of those recordings like that, I'll be normalizing to zero decibels. So you will hear this on the download, unprocessed. I highly recommend, if you can, to listen with headphones or a high-quality pair of headphones away from a noisy environment. That way you can really hear the difference between these things and hear some of these details I'm going to be pointing out to you. So let's start with a few examples here. I got an example in from the Yes Music podcast, and this came from uh, his name is, well, he says his name in this, but I'll start out with the raw recording so you can hear what this sounds like. And this may be quiet at points and it may be loud at points, but this is the raw recording as he sent it. This is Kevin Mulrine of the Yes Music Podcast at yesmusicpodcast.com and you're listening to the Audacity to Podcast. So thank you, Kevin, for sending that in. You can hear it sounds really good and the volume level is 
fairly consistent. Now, if you actually look at the sound graph, and by the way, if you go to the show notes over at the audacity to podcast.com slash 65, you're not going to see very many screenshots. You'll see actual audacity projects that you can download and see these things for yourself, switch them around, play with these examples for yourself and see which you like the best and, you know, get your hands on this stuff yourself. So that sample was pretty good. Now let's compare that to using the Audacity's built-in compressor. And the built-in compressor has some default settings to it. And those default settings are a threshold of minus 12 decibels, a noise floor of minus 30 decibels, ratio of four to one, attack time of 0.4 seconds, and a decay time of, surprisingly, 6 seconds. And then makeup gain for 0 decibels after compressing is checked, as well as compress based on peaks is checked. So those are our options that we're going to use in our example of this. So now listen to that exact same audio, this time run through Audacity's built-in compressor. This is Kevin Mulrine of the Yes Music Podcast at yesmusicpodcast.com and you're listening to the Audacity to Podcast. It sounds very much the same. And again, I really recommend that you be wearing headphones as you're listening to this. You might hear some differences. Now, if you look at the waveform on the site, you'll notice that some of the really quiet sections are now amplified a little bit more, but still there's a lot of variation between everything. There is actually a spot where the Audacity compressor made it peak near the beginning, but you don't really hear that in the recording because it's not too bad of a peak and it's not very long. And at the end, there is an important spot at the end is when he finishes saying podcast, listen to the noise at the end. And you're listening to the Audacity to Podcast. There's just a slight hiss there in it. So that's using the default setting for the Audacity compressor. Now let's use the default settings for Chris's dynamic compressor. These default settings are a compression ratio of 0.5, a compression hardness of 0.5, a floor of minus 32 decibels, and noise gate fall off of zero. Those are the default settings in Chris's dynamic compressor. And I've applied these to the same thing. And you can look at the waveform and compare this for yourself over at theaudacitypodcast.com slash 65. What's most important for you to hear in this, listen to the quiet parts near the middle and listen to the very end after he says podcast. This is Kevin Mulrine of the Yes Music Podcast at yesmusicpodcast.com and you're listening to the Audacity to Podcast. If you have good headphones on, you probably heard right at the end when he says podcast, the noise in the background actually goes up a little bit. That is actually part of a a downfall of Chris's dynamic compressor, but that was just using the default settings. Now let's go down to something much more complicated is the C3 multiband compressor. This is a very complicated plugin, but it's designed to be complicated to really to give you extra power. Being a multiband compressor, it allows you to run compressions on multiple bands of audio. Yeah, duh. But what that means is that just like you have you can have an equalizer where it lets you turn up the low range, the mid range, the high range, or kind of like bass and treble. That's kind of a a very simplified equalization is turning up the bass, turning up the treble, either of those. So a multiband compressor allows you to run the same compression settings on different bands or different ranges of your audio differently from the other. So that way you could do a special boost on the bass, but not so much of a boost on the uh, the high part of it, the treble. So Chris's multiband compressor has a lot of settings because it has five knobs for each band and it has three bands. 
but we'll use just the default settings in our example. Now, when you first turn on Chris's dynamic or the C3 multiband compressor, it has everything turned off. So if you just click OK, it's not going to do anything. What I did is I went in and turned the limiter on and each of the individual compressors. So three different buttons that should say, instead of saying bypass, it should say comp on, which means the compressor is on. Then I run this on the filter. Now what you'll notice is that the volume is quieter than the original. So let me go back to the original and play that for you. This is Kevin Mulrain of the Yes Music Podcast at yesmusicpodcast.com and you're listening to the Audacity to Podcast. So then let's compare this to what C3 did. This is Kevin Mulrain of the Yes Music Podcast at yesmusicpodcast.com and you're listening to the Audacity to Podcast. Now it made it quieter, but if you look at the waveform in Audacity, again, download these projects so you can see this yourself, you'll see that the waveform is a bit more evened out. So what I did to try and make this a bit more fair is then I ran the normalization on this track and we come up with this result. This is Kevin Mulrain of the Yes Music Podcast at yesmusicpodcast.com and you're listening to the Audacity to Podcast. Pretty good. And notice that at the end, the noise wasn't amplified extra. Now we can go in and tweak these settings and it would take a while to figure out what the best settings would be because just a regular compressor can take long enough to figure out what you like. But a multiband compressor is that times three uh, plus two. <laughs> so I don't really recommend the multiband compressor unless you really want a multiband compressor. And most people, I don't really think, need it because it can give headaches to some people. So let's go back to our raw recording that you can hear. This is Kevin Mulrain of the Yes Music Podcast at yesmusicpodcast.com and you're listening to the Audacity to Podcast. Now let's run this through Levelator. Levelator is a standalone software program that allows you to drag a WAV file or a .aiff file onto it. It has no settings, no options whatsoever. It just processes your file and spits it out as another recording that then you can edit to your heart's content. So running this file through Levelator, listen to it now. This is Kevin Mulrain of the Yes Music Podcast at yesmusicpodcast.com and you're listening to the Audacity to Podcast. I would say that's really good, actually. Now, I have my own recipe that I prefer for Audacity and Chris's Dynamic Compressor. I've changed this recipe around a little bit over the couple years. So I use the settings of a compression ratio of 0.8, a hardness of 0.6, a noise floor of point or of minus 24 decibels instead of 32, and a noise gate fall off of four. Now these settings, by the way, and screenshots of these settings will be at the show notes of the audacity to podcast.com slash 65. And then I leave the maximum amplitude at 0.99. And this is using Chris's dynamic compressor 1.6. Boy, I'm throwing out a lot of numbers today, aren't I? So if you don't have that version, go to the audacity to podcast.com slash Chris, and you can download that version. So running it through my normal settings, this is what it would sound like. This is Kevin Mulrain of the Yes Music Podcast at yesmusicpodcast.com and you're listening to the Audacity to Podcast. Did you hear right there at the end? Let me focus on just that spot. Podcast. Podcast. Here, right when he's saying podcast, the noise goes, goes up and down. That is is part of what Chris's dynamic compressor does sometimes, depending on the audio and the noise. So what I did then is I came up with a revised set of numbers with Chris's dynamic compressor. The difference here is uh, Kevin's background is a little bit more noisy than mine. So I decided to raise the floor 
and reduce the noise fall off. So that means that instead of the noise being completely eliminated, it's just cut in half. So the floor is now raised to minus 18 decibels and the uh, cutoff ratio is two instead of four. This is Kevin Mulrain of the Yes Music Podcast at yesmusicpodcast.com and you're listening to the Audacity to Podcast. That now sounds better. Instead of hearing it where it the, the noise at the very end goes up and then back down, it's now a little bit more manageable, but it still kind of sounds a bit odd. So I tried something else. And by the way, everything I'm doing... I was having trouble producing any kind of similar result with Audacity's built-in compressor. I could not get rid of the noise whatsoever with Audacity's built-in compressor. And when I'm talking about getting rid of noise, I'm talking about between words or at the end and beginning of speaking, not the noise removal. That removes noise from the background of everything. I'm talking about just noise between things, so functioning as a noise gate. All I did here, I took the same settings as previously, but increased the hardness. This means that it will much more quickly adjust the volume between things. Now, when you look at this and compare it to the waveforms of everything else, you'll notice that this is much more evened out. That is, that the peaks are much closer together than everything else or all the other examples. That's because it's producing this or running this process a lot harder on this audio. This is Kevin Mulrine of the Yes Music Podcast at yesmusicpodcast.com and you're listening to the Audacity to Podcast. Now that sounds much better. It cuts off very quickly and you don't hear noise during the silent sections, but there is still that section in the middle. .com and you're listening to the Audacity to Podcast. Where the noise gets amplified. That's just part of it. So now let's look over at another example. This is, oh, by the way, you're probably wondering what kind of equipment Kevin was using. He is using a Shure SM58 with an XLR connector to a Behringer Tube Ultra Gain MIC100 XLR 3.5 millimeter mic jack to his computer and recording straight into Audacity. So that's what he's using. Now, let's look at another example. And this one, we'll take a different approach to this one. Instead of using stereo equipment or nice quality recording equipment, we're going to go to an iPhone. And iPhones do actually a pretty good job at recording audio. They have a surprisingly good microphone. They're really handy, especially if you've got an iPhone. And you can just record and post almost straight from the iPhone. This is from John Wilkerson of the wiredhomeschool.com. And he recorded this with an iPhone 4 using the iTalk app. So listen to it in raw form. And there is some silence in the beginning, uh, kind of silence. Listen to the noise in the background, starting now. Hi, this is John Wilkerson, host of The Wired Homeschool over at thewiredhomeschool.com, and you're listening to the Audacity to Podcast with Daniel J. Lewis. This is a great sample, and thanks for sending that, John. First of all, you get to hear the iPhone microphone is pretty good, a lot better than most built-in microphones and computers, and even, I'd also say, better than many USB headset mics. So it's it's pretty good. It Yes, there are things you can notice about the quality of it, but we're not going to talk about that. We're talking about compression. So running the Audacity's built-in compressor, which before I go any farther, let me explain again what compression is, because you might be hearing all of this and trying to figure out what's the difference. A compressor will find the loud spots and louder sections of audio and compress it down so that the end result is your audio is more evened out. I use that phrase because levelating and uh, normalizing mean different things. But it's more evened out, so the loud isn't as loud, the quiet isn't as quiet. 
but compressing audio means you are reducing the volume, so then it has to be reamplified after that. Most of these plugins are doing that, except for C3. C3 doesn't do that, so that's why I run the normalize on C3 to make it fair. So listening to Audacity's built-in compressor with those ex- same, the same default settings, listen to this. Hi, this is John Wilkerson, host of The Wired Homeschool over at thewiredhomeschool.com, and you're listening to the Audacity to Podcast with Daniel J. Lewis. Not really much difference there. If you look at the waveform, yeah, you can see that there is some difference, and you'll definitely see that there are peaks uh, that were left in, some red marks, some clipping to the audio that was left in by the compressor and was not fixed. So then let's move on to what Chris's dynamic compressor with its default settings can do. Listen especially to the noise at the beginning and the end. Hi, this is John Wilkerson, host of The Wired Homeschool over at thewiredhomeschool.com, and you're listening to the Audacity to Podcast with Daniel J. Lewis. Did you notice what it did? It made the noise loud at the beginning, loud at the end, quieter in the middle. So it's seeing that noise and it's amplifying it. Again, default settings here. Let's use the C3 compressor and to make it fair, we'll normalize it. But interestingly, it didn't do much when I normalized it because it's got a peak in it that would have clipped Hi, this is John Wilkerson, host of The Wired Homeschool over at thewiredhomeschool.com, and you're listening to the Audacity to Podcast with Daniel J. Lewis. The volume, the overall volume, isn't as high as it was before because C3 didn't compress part of this, which was kind of odd. There's still, if you look at the waveform, you'll see this one really thin spike at the beginning where C3 didn't do anything. That spike is setting off the normalization So it can't be raised up to a good level because of that one little spike that for some reason C3 didn't compress very well. But if you pay close attention to John's audio, you'll notice his volume, his speaking volume is more consistent. See, as we speak, our volume goes up and down. The end of words, we get quieter. The beginning of words, we're louder. But also just in our speaking, sometimes we'll, we'll drop volume a little bit. And then we'll raise volume a little bit. We'll drop volume. You don't want to completely remove that, but you want to leave some of that in. So this plugin did a good job of not removing that, leaving it in, but still evening out his audio. But it kind of messed up a little bit. Now let's look at what Levelator did. Remember, let me play the raw recording one more time so you can hear that. And compare, and especially what's important to listen to in this, are the beginning and end sections of the audio. Hi, this is John Wilkerson, host of The Wired Homeschool over at thewiredhomeschool.com, and you're listening to the Audacity to Podcast with Daniel J. Lewis. So we got noise at the beginning and the end, and it sounds like maybe he recorded while he was walking out on the sidewalk. (laughs) Maybe. So here it is, running it through Levelator. Hi, this is John Wilkerson, host of The Wired Homeschool over at thewiredhomeschool.com, and you're listening to the Audacity to Podcast with Daniel J. Lewis. If you notice, it removed much of the noise from the beginning of the clip and faded it out at the end of the clip. Didn't completely remove it, but kind of faded it out slowly at the end. Then when I use what I typically was using for Chris's dynamic compressor, my settings that I've talked about before, again, screenshots for these different settings will be at the audacity to podcast.com slash 65. Here's what you'll hear. Hi, this is John Wilkerson, host of the Wired Homeschool over at thewiredhomeschool.com, and you're listening to the Audacity to Podcast with Daniel J. Lewis. Did you hear it again, that where it gets louder and then quieter. Uh, It did it again. So then I took the revised settings, and let's see what it does this time. 
Hi, this is John Wilkerson, host of The Wired Homeschool over at thewiredhomeschool.com, and you're listening to the Audacity to Podcast with Daniel J. Lewis. It still does it. Now, John is in a noisy environment. So what I could do in a compressor, like Chris's dynamic compressor, is raise that floor. What that does is it says anything below this floor is not as important, so it will be uh, reduced and that's what the noise gate fall off is, is it's saying how much will it be reduced? Or uh, in the p- case of Chris's dynamic compressor, the floor also sets what is above it will be compressed down. So if I raise the floor, I run the risk of cutting off the ends of John's words if I raise it too much. So we could tweak this setting, find a higher floor setting, like maybe even a, a floor setting of 12, and that might remove the noise better, but then it might mess up some of John's words. So a, a nice lesson here is record in a quiet environment. John was recording that with an iPhone 4 using the iTalk app. And then I got a message in from George and George was using a Roland R-05, not an external microphone, a mixer, anything like that. He's just recording straight into his digital audio recorder. And it, it makes a great recorder, but listen to how it sounds. Now he does, when this starts off, it is loud. And uh, you'll see in the Audacity project, there is some clipping and he notices that too. But then he's, he either moves it away or talks quietly. But this is still a great example for us. Hello, Dan. This is George. I'm using a Roland R05. I am a newbie, and it appears that I'm speaking a little bit loud. I'm getting a few peaks on my register. Hopefully, this will be enough for you to have some fun, and I hope to catch you live. Thank you, George, for sending that in. It's too bad you didn't have a podcast to mention or something. That would have been great. If George does have a podcast, we'll include that over at theaudacitytopodcast.com slash 65. You can check out his podcast if he has one. If I can find one for him, I'll link to it from there. And again, you can download each of these projects and listen to them and play with them yourself. Now, I don't know, was George podcasting while driving? I don't know. It sounds like he's in a car. And it sounds like there's traffic in the background. So there's that, that gentle hum. But again, we're looking for examples to test these different compressor settings. So when we then run this through Audacity's built-in compressor, right away, we'll notice that it removes those clipping areas. Doesn't do much to the noise. And it just barely, barely changes his more quieter sections. Hello, Dan. This is George. I'm using a Roland R05. I am a newbie, and it appears that I'm speaking a little bit loud. I'm getting a few peaks on my register. Hopefully, this will be enough for you to have some fun, and I hope to catch you live. When you look at the waveform, you'll be able to see some of these differences and play it back and forth and switch between them. So that's why I keep saying go to the audacity to podcast.com slash 65 and download these and play with them yourself. And I'll have links to the different plugins as well that I mentioned. Now running this through Chris's dynamic compressor default settings. Listen to what happens with this. Now you probably know what's going to happen to the noise at the beginning. It's going to make it louder and then drop it down. Hello, Dan. This is George. I'm using a Roland R05. I am a newbie, and it appears that I'm speaking a little bit loud. I'm getting a few peaks on my register. Hopefully, this will be enough for you to have some fun, and I hope to catch you live. Now, in this case, Chris's dynamic compressor with the default settings didn't mess up the noise at the end. It did at the beginning, but in the middle, while George was talking, it did a good job of increasing his volume levels where it needed it and reducing it where it didn't need it. That's the default settings in Chris's dynamic compressor. Now the C3 multiband compressor with its default settings is here. 
Hello, Dan. This is George. I'm using a Roland R05. I am a newbie, and it appears that I'm speaking a little bit loud. I'm getting a few peaks on my register. Hopefully, this will be enough for you to have some fun, and I hope to catch you live. Now, right off, I would say C3 multiband compressor did an excellent job of keeping his audio fairly consistent in volume. Did you notice that at the beginning, it wasn't louder. In the middle, it wasn't too quieter. It was just fairly even throughout. Again, using the default settings of C3. And the reason why I'm referring to default settings of each of these is because I don't want you to uh, have to worry so much about all of these settings. It would be great if it just be open it up, press OK. And that's much of what I'm looking for or something that's simple enough to easily change and remember what things are changed. So now let's look at this sound clip in Levelator. And immediately, if you look at the waveform in Levelator, you'll see that the noise is still there at the beginning, not so much there at the end. And it, overall, everything is evened out, but it's also reduced in volume. Let's listen to it. Hello, Dan. This is George. I'm using a Roland R05. I am a newbie. And it appears that I'm speaking a little bit loud. I'm getting a few peaks on my register. Hopefully this will be enough for you to have some fun. And I hope to catch you live. Now I like what it did with the noise at the end. It just slowly faded it out. It's not a quick cut. And it didn't amplify the noise at all. But it was a nice slow fade out. So now let's run this through or hear what this sounds with my typical settings of Chris's dynamic compressor. And this is going to be a lot more frustrating. Hello, Dan. This is George. I'm using a Roland R05. I am a newbie, and it appears that I'm speaking a little bit loud. I'm getting a few peaks on my register. Hopefully this will be enough for you to have some fun, and I hope to catch you live. As you heard at the very beginning, it amplified the noise and then dropped it down and then did a great job on his voice. And then at the end, it didn't do too much with the noise, but it did start to raise the volume at the end. Now let's go to a more practical scenario of what we might be doing, uh, working with, is... This comes from Max Flight of the Airplane Geeks podcast, and he sent this example in, and his was split up quite a bit into multiple tracks because he was recording through Skype, but this is a great example because here he's recording in studio, and then he has multiple people coming in through Skype. His setup is that he said, me on one channel, co-hosts on Skype on the other channel, he's on a hotel Wi-Fi. He's using a, a Heil PR40, and his co-hosts are using a, a variety of mics. He records from a mixer straight into a digital audio recorder. So his raw audio sounded like this. Welcome to the Airplane Geeks podcast. This is episode 182 of the show where we talk aviation. I'm Max Flight, Rob Mark from the Jetwine blog. Hey, it was nice to... <laughs> it was nice to be here. <laughs> And also our Dan Webb from the Things in the Sky blog. Hey, Max, and good evening. And then finally, our David Vanderhoof from the What Just Flew By blog. Hey, Max. Hey, guys. Now, I did edit this clip down a little bit. I tried to, but I also wanted to be sure to include all of these different voices. So if it doesn't quite seem to make sense why he's saying our Dave, it's just because I edited out some parts. I wanted you to hear the differences. What's really important for you to notice is you probably already did. That second guest that Max introduces has a much lower volume than the other guests do. And then there is also some noise at the beginning and the end of this. So running it through Audacity's default compressor does a great job at the beginning and pretty good job in the middle of the quiet sections. And let's hear this. 
Welcome to the Airplane Geeks Podcast. This is episode 182 of the show where we talk aviation. I'm Max Flight, Rob Mark from the Jetwine blog. Hey, it was nice to it was nice to be here. <laughs> and also our Dan Webb from the Things in the Sky blog. Hey Max, and good evening. And then finally our David Vanderhoof from the What Just Flew By blog. Hey Max. Hey guys. It did a good job. Now, you might have noticed at the very end, there's a little lip smack with just a slight, well, not quite like that, but that is important because that can sometimes set off compressors as you're going to hear in the default settings for Chris's dynamic compressor. Welcome to the Airplane Geeks podcast. This is episode 182 of the show where we talk aviation. I'm Max Flight. Rob Mark from the Jetwine blog. Hey, it was nice to it was nice to be here. <laughs> and also our Dan Webb from the Things in the Sky blog. Hey Max, and good evening. And then finally our David Vanderhoof from the What Just Flew By blog. Hey Max. Hey guys. Did you hear what it did at the end? Again, it amplified it. And it did up pretty good job in the middle. Again, at the beginning, it amplified the noise. C3 compressor, which I think does a great job. Listen to it. Welcome to the Airplane Geeks podcast. This is episode 182 of the show where we talk aviation. I'm Max Flight, Rob Mark from the Jetwine blog. Hey, it was nice to... (laughs) It was... Now, I'm pausing it because you've probably noticed, yes, it's quieter, but that's because there's a loud single peak about to come up and that's why the normalization didn't fix this as well it was nice to be here (laughs) and also our dan webb from the things in the sky blog hey max and good evening and then finally our david vanderhoof from the what just flew by blog hey max hey guys so it did a good job but again there was that little peak in the middle that because of that, the normalization, which is an extra step if you use the C3 multiband compressor, the normalization didn't do very well on it. Now let's look at the Levelator software. Welcome to the Airplane Geeks podcast. This is episode 182 of the show where we talk aviation. I'm Max Flight, Rob Mark from the Jetwine blog. Hey, it was nice to... <laughs> it was nice to be here. <laughs> And also our Dan Webb from the Things in the Sky blog. Hey, Max, and good evening. And then finally, our David Vanderhoof from the What Just Flew By blog. Hey, Max. Hey, guys. It did a great job there. You can hear on the second guest that it amplified his voice because he's quieter, so you hear more noise. That's that's unavoidable. If it has to amplify something that's quiet, whatever is in the background is also going to get amplified, unless you run a noise removal. But I don't always recommend that because that can sometimes make you sound like you're underwater. But an interesting detail on this is at the beginning, you may have noticed that there was a delay in the audio. That wasn't a delay. I started the audio, but you didn't hear the noise. I just started playing it. Here it is again, right now. Welcome to the airplane geek. So see, it removed the noise at the beginning. Listen near the end for that lip smack. You will hear it. Hey, Max. Hey, guys. So there is that slight lip smack, which is okay. It's not totally bad. But did you notice the lip smack did not mess up the audio around it? That's what you might sometimes hear is you'll hear this slight breathing sound or lip smack. And that makes the compressor turn on and everything do its work. And then you hear this of the noise coming in and going out because it heard a lip smack and the lip smack set it off. So now using Chris's dynamic compressor, my previously recommended settings that I've been using. Welcome to the Airplane Geeks podcast. This is episode 182 of the show where we talk aviation. I'm Max Flight, Rob Mark from the Jetwine blog. Hey, it was nice to, it was nice to be here. (laughs) And also our Dan Webb from the Things in the Sky blog. Hey, Max, 
and good evening. And then finally, our David Vanderhoof from the What Just Flew By blog. Hey, Max. Hey, guys. Did you hear what that did at the end to the lip smack? Let's do that again. Hey, guys. It amplified it, did that hill kind of thing, a hump in the audio. Not too great. And I played with Chris's dynamic compressor a bit more to try and get more uh, better quality from this, and it just wasn't working. As I think you're starting to see, Chris's dynamic compressor does a great job on the voices, sometimes not so great of a job on the noise. If you've got a somewhat noisy or uh, moderately noisy background, if it's not too noisy in the background, then you're okay. But if you've got noise in the background, then eh, it's not going to do as well. Now let's listen to a couple. I would call these studio quality recordings. This is from the Who Day Weekly podcast, and he uses an Audio-Technica AT2020 cardioid condenser mic, interesting, to compare this with everything, and he recorded it into a Taskcam DR5 digital audio recorder. So this comes from, uh, from Nick over at Who Day Weekly and starting with the raw audio. Now, Nick's is a great example because he starts off not like peaking or clipping, but it is a, large, a louder spot. So there is a peak. It doesn't clip out. But then the rest of it, he's talking fairly quietly. So this is a great example to see how the compressor is going to handle the beginning parts and the middle parts, as well as some close to silence in the middle. So here is the raw form. Hi, this is Nick Zubling from the Who Day Weekly Podcast and the SPNC.TV Podcasting Network. You're listening to the Audacity to Podcast with your host, Daniel J. Lewis. So, by the way, he's got like this great football voice. I just hear his voice and it sounds like football. <laughs> so, it, you could hear it's, it's much quieter, the recording. But it does have a nice studio sound. There's not much noise in the background. So I don't know what kind of room setup he's using. He is in the chat room right now uh, as I record this live over at noodle.mx slash live. So I expect he's going to tell me what kind of room he's recording this in in just a moment. But that was the raw recording. So now let's run this through Audacity's built-in compressor. And he does have a small studio, he said. So that's why you're hearing that nice uh, sound and very little noise in the background. This is with Audacity's built-in compressor, the default settings. Hi, this is Nick Zubling from the Who Day Weekly Podcast and the SPNC.TV Podcasting Network. You're listening to the Audacity to Podcast with your host, Daniel J. Lewis. The built-in compressor did a pretty good job. It's good here and there, but if you look at the waveform you see near the beginning, it didn't do much. Near the middle, it did some good stuff. Near the end, it did some better stuff. But it's kind of hit and miss through it. Now, with Chris's dynamic compressor, default settings. Hi, this is Nick Zubling from the Who Day Weekly Podcast and the SPNC.TV Podcasting Network. You're listening to the Audacity to Podcast with your host, Daniel J. Lewis. Really, the, compressor, the, the Chris's dynamic compressor didn't do much. It lowered some things here and there, but overall, it didn't do much, which was surprising. I would have expected it to do better on that, but it's probably because Nick's voice is a bit quieter through the majority of the recording, and that's why it didn't do so well of a job on his voice. Now using the C3 multiband compressor and after leveling it or normalizing it, to minus one decibels, we get this. Hi, this is Nick Zubling from the Who Day Weekly Podcast and the SPNC.TV Podcasting Network. You're listening to the Audacity to Podcast with your host, Daniel J. Lewis. It did a fantastic job. Now keep in mind, there's little to really, I would say, no noise in the background. And it did a great job on his voice this time around. There aren't many extremely high peaks even though if you look at the raw audio there's a high peak at the beginning and the rest is kind of low it did a great job evening it out 
And that's why I think that the C3 multiband compressor is good at doing because my theory on this is that since it's a multiband compressor, it's performing its compression better on the areas that other compressors aren't getting so well. So in the case of Nick's voice, he has that deep voice. A multiband compressor works great on him because it's compressing his his low range of his voice separately from his high range. It might be using the exact same settings, but it's still compressing it differently. It's kind of like if you line up two chocolate bars and you've got a short chocolate bar and a long chocolate bar and you cut it in half based on the long chocolate bar. Well, then the the short chocolate bar isn't really cut in half anymore. It's cut in a third or in one third and two thirds maybe. But the long chocolate bar is cut in half. Well, multiband compressor is like separating those chocolate bars and cutting each of them in half. So then when you come back together, they're all cut in half. It's nothing is uneven. So I think that's why, and that's just theory, by the way, now I'm getting hungry for chocolate bars and you probably are too, but that's my theory on why the multiband compressor does such a great job on Nick's voice is that he has that low voice. You're probably getting the idea. Again, a lot of this depends on what kind of voice you have. Let's listen to Levelator. Hi, this is Nick Zubling from the Who Day Weekly Podcast and the SPNC.TV Podcasting Network. You're listening to the Audacity to Podcast with your host, Daniel J. Lewis. I think Levelator did a great job on this. It's very, very close to the multiband compressor. And in a couple places, I think it did better than the multiband compressor. And remember, Levelator has no settings, so nothing to worry about click on or anything like that. Now let's listen to what my normal settings would be in Chris's dynamic compressor. Hi, this is Nick Zubling from the Who Day Weekly Podcast and the SPNC.TV Podcasting Network. You're listening to the Audacity to Podcast with your host, Daniel J. Lewis. It kept a lot of that range in there, but it's still some of the quiet spots. There's a bit too much range. I played with this a lot to see if I could get it to perform better. And Chris's dynamic compressor just wasn't coming up very well in this test. So that's the Who Day Weekly podcast. Now let's go over to another studio example. And this comes from Jim Kerwin, who is, by the way, one of my design clients, as you'll get the idea from one of the things that he says in the feedback or in this audio. But he is recording in some kind of sound studio. I believe he, oh, he's recording directly into a Roland R-05. And you'll hear that he has very little background noise. And his audio, actually his voice, I guess he's just really good at speaking at a consistent level with his voice. So listen to this. Hi, this is Jim Kerwin from the kernelsofwheat.com podcast, and you're listening to the Audacity to Podcast with Daniel J. Lewis, podcaster, website designer, and graphic artist extraordinaire. Thank you for those kind words. Now, there were about a second and a half at the beginning and end where he wasn't talking, but I let it play, and he didn't hear anything. That's his raw recording. I'm guessing he's recording in the closet. When I run this through Audacity's compressor, it does a pretty good job. Hi, this is Jim Kerwin from the kernelsofwheat.com podcast, and you're listening to the Audacity to Podcast with Daniel J. Lewis, podcaster, website designer, and graphic artist extraordinaire. Now, I really have to be a little bit skeptical because it does sound like Even in the raw recording, his voice was already recorded. So this one, I'm I'm a little cautious to keep using this as an example because it sounds like there might be some compression already going on. Maybe it's in the R-05. Maybe uh, he gave me the wrong file because he did send me a separate file that he said he compressed. Maybe he just accidentally swapped the files. But as you're hearing, though, this is a good example of if you have a good quiet environment, a compressor can do something a lot better to your audio. 
Now, this is going to be a sample, and I believe this is my second to final sample. <laughs> so I'll save that last one. Uh, this is another example from an iPhone 4 recorded using the iTalk app, and this comes from Troy Story. Now, he recorded this in what seems like a bit quieter of an environment uh, than John Wilkerson. Here is the other example of someone who is using an iPhone with the iTalk app, and this is the same kind of phone. I don't know if it's black or white, but that shouldn't make a difference on the sound. Listen to his audio now, raw recording. Hey there, this is Troy Price with the Completely Comics Podcast. It's a podcast for new and casual comic book readers, and you're listening to the Audacity to Podcast on the Noodle Mix Network. Troy is one of those high-energy people when he's podcasting, as you can tell in here, and he loves comics. If you look at the waveform, what you'll see is he's got these high points and occasional low points. High points, occasional low points. High points, occasional low points. That's, that's the way many people tend to talk when they get excited. So let's see how Audacity does this with the default uh, settings for the built-in compressor. Hey there, this is Troy Price with the Completely Comics Podcast. It's a podcast for new and casual comic book readers, and you're listening to the Audacity to Podcast on the Noodle Mix Network. It did almost nothing. Now let's listen to Chris's dynamic compressor. Hey there, this is Troy Price with the Completely Comics Podcast. It's a podcast for new and casual... Com it did almost nothing. Let's listen then to the C3 compressor, level it. Now there is a peak at the beginning, so that threw off the normalization again. Hey there, this is Troy Price with the Completely Comics Podcast. It's a podcast for new and casual comic book readers, and you're listening to the Audacity to Podcast on the Noodle Mix Network. It's a lot more evened out... But because of how patterned Troy's ups and downs are, and what I mean by that are, it's kind of like this, a few words a bit louder, a few words quieter, a few words a bit louder, a few words quieter. That's the way we tend to talk when we get excited. And because of that, I can actually hear the noise in the background slight noise, very slight, but I hear this kind of waving sound in it every second or so. And it's because of that longer pattern, instead of just going up and down with each individual word, like we normally do uh, when we're talking like a, a normal volume, it's, it's a little bit more patternistic. So C3 doesn't do too well on his voice. Now let's listen to Levelator. Hey there, this is Troy Price with the Completely Comics Podcast. It's a podcast for new and casual comic book readers, and you're listening to the Audacity to Podcast on the Noodle Mix Network. I think the Levelator did a better job at this than the other plugins did, because so far, what we've seen is that he has these highs and lows, and Levelator kept much of that without giving it that wave sound in both his audio or the noise in the background. So I think Levelator did a pretty good job at this. Now let's run the normal settings I would use for Chris's dynamic compressor and see what it does to his audio recorded from an iPhone 4. And listen again, especially to the end when he finishes talking. Hey there, this is Troy Price with the Completely Comics Podcast. It's a podcast for new and casual comic book readers, and you're listening to the Audacity to Podcast on the Noodle Mix Network. It didn't do much to those lower sections, but at the end, it amplified the little noise that there was. Network. Network. You hear that at the end, right after he says network, you hear this. Mix Network. One final example for you, and I hope I haven't put you to sleep. This is, this is one of those things that's going to make you go, aww. This was a, a little boy, I think, little boy, <laughs> saying, uh, singing a little song here, and I think the song is actually in a different language, and that's why I can't understand the lyrics too much of it. It's a Ten Commandments song that he learned, and the dad is here. And they're farther away from the microphone, so it picks up a lot more room noise. 
And this could be a great example of what you might get if you're recording with an internal microphone or some cheap microphone and you're really far away from it. You'll get a lot more room noise, a lot more reverb from your voice bouncing off the walls. But let's see what the compressors do to this one. Here is the raw recording. What does your shirt say? I bear royalty. What does that mean? I break stuff. You break stuff? Yeah. Oh. All right, can you stand up? All right, say the Ten Commandments. Well, no, I got the one and two. Don't first say it, I'm not going to to, to see you the nigga. Only fit for our son, if they were halfway through, what is it for you? Now it actually goes on much longer than that, but I cut it down to that sample so that you could hear the very quiet sections in the beginning and also when he gets a little louder and maybe got closer to the mic for a moment or just got louder speaking, but near the end. So run this through Audacity's built-in compressor and it does a pretty good job, actually. What does your shirt say? I wear royalty. What does that mean? I break stuff. You break stuff? Yeah. Oh. All right, can you stand up? All right, say the Ten Commandments. Well, no, I got the one and two. Don't first say it, I'm not going to to, to see you the nigga. We fit for our son, if they were halfway through, what is it for you? So the built-in compressor did a pretty good job. There is, of course, that noise in the background. and I, You're going to see we can't really get rid of that with the compressor. If we did, things would start to sound weird. So noise is not always a bad thing if you can't remove it. Chris's dynamic compressor with its default settings. What does your shirt say? I wear royalty. What does that mean? I break stuff. You break stuff? Yeah. Oh. All right. Can you stand up? All right. Say the Ten Commandments. Well, no, I got the one or two. Don't for sale. I'm not going to to see you the nigga we fit for our son if they were halfway through what is it for you? Chris's dynamic compressor didn't do too much of a good job the quiet spots at the beginning not so much well we know by now that the C3 multiband compressor does a good job of really evening things out so let's listen to how it handles this and I'm just going to play the first few seconds and the last few seconds. What does your shirt say? I wear royalty. What does that mean? I break stuff. You break? That's the beginning. Here's the end part. To see you the nigga we fit for our son if they were halfway through what is it for you? It it did an okay job, but it's really struggling with these quieter sections where his son is much farther away from the microphone. So now let's see what Levelator does. What does your shirt say? I wear royalty. What does that mean? I break stuff. You break stuff? Yeah. Oh. All right. Can you stay? That's the beginning. Here's the end. To see you the nigga, we fit for our son, if they were halfway through, what is it for you? The Levelator did a much better job at keeping things more consistent, but as you could tell at the beginning when everything was very quiet, you got some of that in and out of the background noise, briefly. Running this through Chris's dynamic compressor with my normal settings... What does your shirt say? I wear royalty. What does that mean? I break stuff. You break stuff? Yeah. That's the beginning. Here's the end. You the nigga, we fit for our son, if they were halfway through, what is it for you? It did a good job, but wasn't as good as Levelator. So... Here's the conclusion of all of this is Chris's dynamic compressor, I think, gives you more control and does more things better than Audacity's built-in compressor. Audacity's built-in compressor 
I just, I can't get it to do stuff sometimes. Like I raise the noise floor and it doesn't do anything with the noise. And I change numbers around. It's not doing things. It's not affecting the audio as much. Maybe it's a bug. Uh, Maybe it's just the way the compressor is built that it's not designed to do so much with certain uh, information. It is nice that it has a little graph in there, but that shouldn't be the basis for what we decide to use. Chris's dynamic compressor does a great job on studio quality recordings. And there are numbers that you can play with in Chris's dynamic compressor that are pretty easy to understand numbers or terms for the numbers. Like the the hardness is how hard it does the effect, how quickly it does the effect. And some of the other numbers, very few options. C3 multiband compressor does a great job of evening things out, but it occasionally misses something. It doesn't normalize your audio, so you have to rerun the normalization on it. And since it misses something or it doesn't quite compress something well enough, you get these peaks that mean that the rest of your audio, when you run the normalization, won't be amplified well enough. Sometimes maybe not even at all, depending on how the peak is shaped. But then we come to Levelator. Levelator is not an Audacity plugin. It's a free standalone software program over at conversationsnetwork.net, I believe. I'll have the link in the show notes at theaudacitytopodcast.com slash 65. Levelator does a great job on the voices, works well on studio recordings and noisy recordings alike, It doesn't mess up the noise or little clicks or anything like that, making the the hump sound like Chris's dynamic compressor does. But it gives you no options. Here's my conclusion on this, is looking at all of these things, I think that across these different samples of audio, what consistently did the best job is Levelator. Levelator was designed by by podcasters for podcasters. And so it's very obvious that they would keep in mind and design it to work with these situations where people have different sounding rooms and such. And it does a really good job. It does a much better job than when it first came out and when I first tried it. Now, all of this stuff that I've run is aside from anything like music And this is run just on voices. And that's really all I recommend. If at all possible, run your compressor just on voices. Don't let a compressor run if you have any music fading in or fading out. But based on what I've seen, Levelator may do a much better job at that now than it used to. So here's what I'm actually going to start doing is using Levelator in my podcast. So the voice that you're hearing right now has been run through Levelator not Chris's dynamic compressor. I'd like to know if you noticed a difference this whole time when you've listened to the download of this. And I want to know what you think of each of these samples. And I will have all of these available for you to download. And you can see the different tracks with the different settings. And you can run your own settings, download the plugins, all of that from the show notes over at the audacitypodcast.com slash 65. Now, I know this has gone a bit long, and I covered a lot of stuff, played a lot of samples, but I hope it helped, and I'd love to hear from you what you thought. Please leave a comment in the show notes, and if you have questions or feedback for the podcast, then you can email feedback at theaudacitypodcast.com or call in to 903-231-2221 and leave a message there. You can also email audio feedback, just like all of these people sent audio feedback attachments with their iPhones, recording devices, whatever. Email that to feedback at theaudacitypodcast.com and get these download links and everything over at the show notes at theaudacitypodcast.com slash 65. Huge thanks to everyone who sent in audio samples and did this so quickly too i was amazed that people were available to do this and i really appreciate it go to the website check out each of their podcasts too many for me to mention right now but go to the website check out their podcasts and i hope you'll find something that you enjoy listening to 
Please follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash the ramen noodle. And make sure you're subscribed to the podcast. Maybe leave some ratings and reviews in iTunes too from the audacity to podcast.com. Now that, that I've given you some of the guts and taught you some of the tools, it's time for you to podcast with passion, organization, and dialogue. And try level later too. I'm Daniel J. Lewis. Thanks for listening. The Audacity to Podcast is a proud member of the Noodle Mix Network over at noodle.mx. Find more of our podcasts on Once Upon a Time, the TV show, clean comedy, and more at noodle.mx. The Audacity to Podcast is also a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Find more at techpodcasts.com.